please welcome Scott Hanselman and Kayla Cinnamon. Woo. Hey, friends. I am Scott. And I'm Kayla. Uh, I work in the developer division. And I work on Windows. I've been working on .NET and open source for many years. And I was the former PM on Windows Terminal, and I'm now the PM for Dev Home. Yay! Woo, Dev Home! So we are both developers, and we love developing on Windows. We choose Windows. We like spending time in Windows. And we are, as you saw before, excited to announce Dev Home. Yes, Dev Home is the new home or hub-like experience on Windows for developers. And it's fully open source and extensible, so you can get the features that you need all in one place. Open source, absolutely amazing. So this is any dev, not just Visual Studio devs, not just Azure devs. That's right. Any dev on Windows can find something helpful in Dev Home. OK, so things that they care about. And you said open source, which means it's extensible. Yes, and it also has a fully customizable widget dashboard. So you can get extensions that have widgets, and then you can customize a view that you need. Dig it. So dev drives are being announced. These are really cool. This is using REFS. Uh, which is coming from on high from the workstation SKU mm -hmm. down to not just pro, not just enterprise, but also home. Yep. This is really <laughs> meaningful because we worked really, really hard for students, many of which run Windows Home, and they use WSL. So they're going to get the benefits of that workstation quality, speedy uh, file system, except they're going to have that on uh, home and pro in the form of dev drives. They're going to get great performance gains. And then Winget configuration. This is really, really cool, because I've actually been doing my configuration with basically batch files. Yeah, so Winget configuration lets you get into a desired state. So they're called DSC, or desired state configuration files. And we've been using them quite a bit over the last couple of days, just rerunning these machines and just getting to a setup that's been really handy. We've set up probably 15 different demo machines, paved them, and brought them back, all using Winget. And instead of a batch file that's just Winget install, Winget install, we're saying Winget configure. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to support other desired state configuration providers like Chocolatey, Ansible, Chef, Puppet. It's going to be super cool. Yeah. And we've been working with popular repositories as well to get YAML files on there so you can get started contributing to those repositories also. All right, cool. So let's shave this yak. You're not familiar with that term? Is that like no. a, Did I just age myself? <laughs> a little bit. OK. So OK. So yak shaving is like when your boss asks you to do a thing, and then they come back a couple of days later, and you haven't done the thing, but you're doing really important stuff mm -hmm. that has to be done before you do the thing. Right. And you're like, yeah, I, I'll do that as soon as I shave this yak. Is this, you're not? It's. This? No? OK. OK. All right. Here's, a, here's an animated GIF from Malcolm in the Middle. So he comes home, and he turns on the light. Oh, the light doesn't work. Shoot, i got to fix this light bulb. I'll go get a light bulb. Oh, the shelf is messed up. I'm going to go ahead and fix this shelf. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab the, hey, this is kind of a squeaky drawer right here. Let me get some WD-40. I'm going to fix that drawer. Oh, I'm out of WD-40. Oh, I'll get the car, go to the thing. Oh, I can't start the car. Oh, shoot. Hey, did you fix that light bulb? What does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> Is that not the developer experience like all day long? That's like everybody, right? So, so here's the thing, right? Like starting your machine, getting your machine set up is a hassle. And we're trying to solve that both in the cloud with DevBox and on physical machines. Yeah, exactly. So Scott, if you wanted to join Kayla Incorporated, you'd have to set up a machine right now. Right, you would have to give me a Word document because whenever you join a new company, they give you a Word doc and they say, here, you have a month to set up your computer. What is this? You have like 45 minutes to set up a computer. So you are bringing me a Surface? Yeah. In the original shrink wrap? Yeah. OK. Uh, uh, I'm going to luxuriate in the shrink wrap of it. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh. It's got that, that new Surface smell, mm. which is a lot like the uh, new convention center smell, if you've noticed that. Oh, oh, oh. I have to read this EULA. Yeah. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade okay. with you. <laughs> it's a good week. Yeah. All right, let's bring that up. So I'm bringing up this brand new machine here on number one. And we'll see. I saw the Windows logo pop up for a second. 
what happens next. Did I not push the wrong? Oh, just oh, a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Here we go. Okay. This is called Ubi, <laughs> out of box experience. And then if you've seen it twice, this is true, it's called Scooby, yeah. which is second chance, out of box experience. So how many moments is this? Mm. Oh. The sound of windows. Ah, yes. Is this US? Yes. There. You type kind of slow. Let me, I'll do it. You can go back. Fine, fine. All right, so you're going to go through Ubi? If yeah, anything, I'll do it. I'll, I got you. If anything interesting happens, stop me. Okay. Okay, because it's important. All right, let's go to PowerPoint. Cool. All right, so the idea is onboarding is a hassle. You're going through the out-of-box experience. You want to get set up as quickly as possible. We've all seen that Word document, that SharePoint, that uh, wiki that explains you step-by-step step what you have to do, and it's a, a, a huge hassle. What we're trying to do is introduce stuff that removes developer toil. The opposite of developer joy is toil. It's no fun to do this stuff. Uh, I want to make developer Ubi faster and easier. I want to use things like Winget to decide what the desired state of my machine is and then set that machine up easily. When I get through Ubi, I want to be in developer home and I want to have a place to start. I want to clone my repositories from wherever they come from. And then I want my inner loop as I'm coding to be faster and I'll be using like a developer drive in order to get that experience. We've all done this kind of stuff before. Many of us have used tools like Chocolatey or Ansible or Winget to make those things better. We want to centralize that experience so it's a great and fun experience and a joyful experience that is easy as opposed to what it is now, which is a huge hassle. I can see you kind of click, click, clicking through that. Uh, and then you're going to go and add my Microsoft account. So just to make sure you see that she's working through Ubi and she's going to go and log in as whatever Scott Hanselman demo. That's right. But okay. do you see this? Wait, wait, before you switch. Look oh, at this. Look at this. Look at this. That? We've no. added the VS Code icon to the login page to represent developers right when you get Windows. It's a little small. I feel, <laughs> I feel that should be larger. Let's, uh, let's, get that, let's get that fixed. OK, so go ahead and log in. <laughs> log in is, yeah. okay, so you're going to log in as me. I got you. Okay, so she's going to keep doing that. OK, so she's logging in. So developers are actually recognized in Ubi. We're going to get there in a second. Then. The developer's inner loop is a really interesting thing. This is you code, you build, you maybe test, maybe test. I've seen some of your code. Uh, and then you deploy, and then you do it all again. Right? If you're a web developer, you make a change, you hit refresh. You're going to use tools like Hot Reload. You're going to use faster builds. You want that loop to be as tight and as quick as possible, because that is supposed to be where the fun is. That's where things like Copilot are going to make it more fun. That's where faster systems with dev drives are going to make it more fun. Performance matters at this point. Then outside the inner loop, this is when you send your code to your coworkers. You maybe push the container to a registry. You then deploy it, and then you build it out in the cloud. It gets tests, and then you might, you good? I need you to. Oh, you need to. I need, yeah. Oh, OK, hang on. I need to answer one simple question. OK, let's customize your experience. There's only one right answer here. There's only one right answer. Do you do school? I don't do school. Uh, do you track expenses? <laughs> no. Uh, oh, I don't want to click that button. I'm not a business person. Um, ooh, delightful apps and websites. So there's a developer choice now. I've always felt underrepresented in, develop, in the out-of-box experience. I'm looking for a developer, and it's not there. Yeah, so we've just added this development checkbox. And for now, it will just install Dev Home for you and pin it to the Start menu. But we'd love to know if there's anything else you want this checkbox to do to help you get started easier on Windows for developing. Very cool. So the developer intent, the idea that this computer is for developers, gets you to Dev Home. Because Dev Home is open source, you tell us what you want that to do. How far should it go? How configurable should it, should it be in order to get us to this inner loop and this outer loop faster? So she's going to keep clicking through there and go through Ubi, because sometimes it takes a minute. And back over to here, that experience as you're building, testing, and then also doing things like static scans and governance uh, are your team working. And then these are all of your kind of favorite apps or favorite features of Windows that you're going to want to use. Some of these icons you might recognize. Some of them you might not. So here we see the new Dev Home. Dev Home logo. Yeah. Then we have a nice icon for Dev Drives. Right. WSL got a refresh. They got a new logo. This and is cool. That's WSL, right? Yep. And uh, Winget actually got an icon as well. So this is the new Winget icon. OK. 
And then over here, we've got Dev Home plus GitHub because you can have yep. plugins. Yep, so we've created a Dev Home GitHub extension, and then we made an icon for it as well. So when you install Dev Home for the first time, it will install the extension alongside it. Very cool. And then down here, we've got Terminal, mm -hmm. Power Toys, and not WSL, but WSA, the Windows subsystem for Android. Yep. So that's just build and develop and run Android apps on Windows, just like apps, because they're apps, which is really cool. Exactly. All right. So. So I think we might want to jump back over to this machine. OK. So we're going to fast forward time just a second here to a machine that's just completed Ubi. So this machine has nothing on it. Mm -hmm. uh, We've got Dev Home ready, though. I see Dev Home sitting in the taskbar there. Yes. So when you first launch Dev Home, you're greeted with this awesome set up your environment page. This shows you all of the features that you can use in Dev Home. So the first thing that we'll probably want to do is get all of our favorite apps, because we just showed our favorite apps. We want to get them here. So one way we can do that is by clicking Get Started, and we'll head over to the machine configuration page. And I'm actually going to click Configuration File. So this will let me launch a WinGet configuration DSC YAML file to get my favorite apps right here using Dev Home. So you can see in the YAML, I'm actually going to start installing things like Visual Studio, and then we can get all of our other packages as well um, to be successful developing on Windows. So I could put this YAML file, and it's a bummer it's not XML, it's yeah. old. Yeah. Um, YAML is, is XML for young people. Oh. Um, okay. the, the angle brackets are there. You just can't see them. They're just, they're invisible. But I don't have glasses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so mean. <laughs> so what's cool about this is that she just picked a file called Scott's Faves. That could be in, my, in a gist. It mm -hmm. could be in OneDrive. And that could describe just the stuff that are my favorite utilities, my favorite apps. And yep. we're going to see how we can use YAML files a little bit later uh, in another way. Cool. Cool. So you're going to start installing uh, Visual Studio. Yep. OK. And again, some of these are apps. Some of these are experiences. Some of these are built into Windows. We can go and configure all of those things. We can set up WSL. We can install Power Toys. We can put a Ubuntu on a machine, or in this case, install uh, Visual Studio, which is super cool. Now let's talk a little bit about how far we've come. We dug up a couple of uh, tweets in here. Here's one from 2018. So what is that now, five years? Yeah. Or a half decade, as old people say. Um, <laughs> where I propose, like, maybe we have developer mode, developer Ubi, developer home. We're starting to get this sense of making a place like, hey, I know I'm a dev. Mm -hmm. I want control of my machine. I want perf. And then we made this checkbox here, this checklist, back in 2019. Open source terminal. Yep, thank done. You for, thank you for doing that. Check. Uh, native Linux support. Check. Uh, we made the indexer smarter to know about Git repositories. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about virus scanning as it relates to dev drives getting better window management with power toys and fancy zones, WinGet integrated package manager. Like a lot of these ideas and the stuff that we're making actually came from the community. A lot of this stuff, it's so important that like, I don't know, I just think it's crazy that Dev Home is open source and yeah. in box. Yeah. That, was that hard to get them to let you do that? Well, so we got a lot of street cred from Windows Terminal. So we were able to replicate the same open source process and then now give Dev Home, and then we can work with the community to make Dev Home better too. Yeah. And what's cool is um, Terminal has about 30% of the pull requests are from the community. 30% of the pull requests to Terminal are community. Yeah. Wow. You know, when I think of street cred, I don't really think about walking around with like a terminal. Maybe oh. you're hanging out in cooler streets than I am. I think I am. OK. Oh. <laughs> it's, the, it's the little digs. It's the, it's the twisting of the night. Did we not pay the designer? <laughs> did you make this? I did make this. Thank you. Uh, this is what happens when you let a developer get PowerPoint. <laughs> I was like, co-pilot, make this better. And it was like, you're a developer. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> Uh, although Copilot for PowerPoint did suggest that I remove the little like animated pixel digging construction oh. guy from uh, MySpace. That was probably best. Yeah. 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 Um, these are actually some of the features that we've brought to community, uh, for developer community over the last five years. So look at some of these things. We've got WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Some of these I actually don't use, but I didn't know about. Quake mode. Yeah. Was that you? That was our team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some other new ones. There's new ones here that we are announcing today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, yesterday. Cool. Uh, so some little Easter eggs in the slide, too. 
Yeah, I, I recognize that there was an issue here because people have been arguing about whether we call them terrible tabs, because mm -hmm. they're just terrible, or tab tear out. So we put that in there twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, running GUI apps on Linux, paste is plain text. We're going to hear about those in your session later this afternoon. And there's yep. actually going to be three sessions. We'll give you a slide telling you, go to these sessions, check them out, see them happen. Yep, sounds good. OK. All Let's right. actually. Uh, play a little bit. Is that OK? Are we going to go back over here? Oh, you oh, got more? Here. Let's take a look. So how are we doing uh, this button here? Yep. Yep. Cool. So I just set up with our YAML file, got our favorite applications. OK. Now I'm back on that welcome screen in Dev Home, and I'd like to talk about this little connect to GitHub piece. So we did mention the Dev Home GitHub extension that comes by default. If you click connect accounts, you can sign in with your GitHub account here, which we've already got Scott signed in and then we can customize our dashboard. So here we've just got a few GitHub widgets. We also have system widgets that show performance of your machine, so then you can have everything that you need in one place. These are really cool because these widgets are, like you see, custom to me. This is all real and pulling from both the local machine and the cloud. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned that, uh, I don't know about you, but my inbox is full of notifications yeah. from GitHub about stuff that I don't know if I'm supposed to do or not. Yeah, I found that this has been super helpful, and we've been using Dev Home to develop Dev Home over the past few weeks, and it's just really helped us keep up with issues and PRs on the GitHub repo. And you said something about notifications, which I haven't actually used yet. Yeah, so there's a little uh, nugget of a feature that comes with this GitHub extension. So if you are signed in with your GitHub account, and then you submit a pull request, and you have a check that fails, so that's like a build pipeline, a bot that's failed, something like that, Windows will send you a notification saying that your pull request has failed. So this saved us a ton of time over the last couple of weeks because we've been using Azure pipelines, and sometimes the builds will randomly fail or time out. We would be notified right away, click the notification, go to the PR, and run, it, run the checks again. Cool. And I, I've went and pinned GPU and CPU and memory and things like that because I care about perf. Mm -hmm. Dev Home can also help me make my disk more performant. Yes, when you use dev drives. When I use dev drives. Yeah, so if we come back over here, you can see the create a dev drive card. And if we click create dev drive, we'll head over to the disks and volumes page in settings. This is actually cool because you just jumped from dev home into system. So I feel mm -hmm. like as a dev, are we more well represented inside yeah. of settings? Dude, check this out. Look at this. We're right here on the system, the system okay. page. Hang on, let me see this. We are not as important as nearby sharing. <laughs> we are more important than activating your machine. Rock on. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> All right, very cool. Intended for development use only. You know that my parents are going to go in there and start clicking checkboxes. <laughs> Absolutely. So to make it faster to go back. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. So the best way to create a dev drive is just by clicking create dev drive here at the top. And you're offered two different options. So you can make a VHD, which is a virtual hard disk, or you can resize an existing volume and use your, your hardware on your machine. Um, if you allocate memory to the VHD, it will dynamically resize, so it won't use all that memory at once. If you do the existing volume option, it will save all that okay, to so a new drive. Okay, so similar to the way WSL makes a VHD and mm -hmm. puts um, ext4 or one of those Linux file systems, you're going to make a VHD and put REFS on it. Yep. Or you said resize my existing volume, so that means yes. on a raw, like on the raw disk right. for, for perf. Yep, exactly. I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that we're in dark mode and it's all modern and everything, but I'm going to go and hit Windows X and I'm going to click Disk Management and I'm going to go screaming into the late 90s into MMC. Uh, okay, look at that. NTFS C drive, REFS D drive. Okay, now I do in fact believe you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I wouldn't lie to you. Mm, would you though? All right, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that smattering of applause. <laughs> Can I have just one drive? Can I have multiple drives? Can I have different projects? How do I decide how I want to have my dev drives be? You can make as many drives as you'd like, and you can also clone multiple projects to one drive or have them split up one drive, not one drive, mm -hmm. um, and then have them split as you'd like in that way. And I've, at home, I've got my, my C drive and my D drive already. They're physical drives. I could make mm -hmm. C system and then D uh, a dev, dev drive. drive. D for dev drive. D for dev drive. Yep. Dig it. Cool. All right. Cool. And I think we've got some. A slide for this. All right. Do, 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 do. do we have a slide for this? Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, yeah, check this out. So this is really cool. This shows some of the dev drive performance improvements that we are seeing in the labs. 
Right now, we are seeing, in some cases, uh, you can see like a Git clone of a local Node.js repo is 41% faster. Uh, builds on .NET, in this case, we were building Orchard Core, which is a CMS in the lab, is 22%. Now, this is coming out this week, mm -hmm. which means that you're going to have this in, uh, was it Windows External? Insi Windows Insider Program Dev Channel. Okay, Windows Insider Dev. Yes. Um, we want you to test it. How do we get people feedback? Because some people are going to see better perf, some people are going to see less perf. We want a diverse bunch of hardware to test on. Yeah, I think the best way might be on Feedback Hub. Yeah. We actively triage on Feedback Hub. Yeah, so hit Windows F when mm -hmm. you're doing this. If you see good perf, bad perf, we want to share that with the team because you know when this comes out later this fall for everybody, we want this to work great so that you're going to see super cool performance improvements as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. All right, so we need you to continue being productive. You're joining my company, right? Okay, back to the, back to the Ubi. All right, so we're, we're still here on this uh, distant volumes page. Just close that out. We'll go back to Dev Home. Another great feature of Dev Home is the machine configuration piece. Um, we did show off this configuration file bit, but you can also do the end-to-end -end setup, which will help you clone repositories, install apps that you need, and then also you can create a dev drive from there too. Cool. Um, so here you can just click clone repositories and get started from here. But I know you're a big fan of the uh, command line. I do like to drive stick shift. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Well, this is cool though, because you could go and do it all at once. You can do parts of it in Dev Home. Like, no one's dictating how you want to do things. So you said it's D? Yep, D for Dev Drive. D for Dev Drive. I'm going to go and I'm going to clone uh, with recurse subdirectories ASP.NET Core, because ASP.NET Core is a really big repository. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're getting about 10 megabits a second. You know, Wi Fi uh, and internet at these kind of conferences are a little bit. Um, up and down, so here we've got about 13, 15 megabits a second. This is a large one, and it also has sub-modules. Right. So we, this is a good thing for you to test when you get a dev drive, is clone on your C, clone on your D, mm -hmm. do it multiple times, file feedback, and see how things are going. In this case here, we've already brought that down. All this part here that is disk-specific, not network-specific, is right. where your perf's going to happen. Exactly. Is that right? It's uh, right when those file I.O. scenarios happen, which is great in cloning. Right. So in that case there, I cloned all of ASP.NET mm -hmm. and all related sub-modules in, I don't know what that was, like 30 seconds. That's pretty cool. All right. So I'm starting to believe you that this is going to be a good thing. Cool. And I'm going to probably have to go and build this at some point at Kayla Incorporated, correct? Yeah. That's the job. All right. Cool. Um, actually, let's go into that repository and see what came down. That is in uh, GitHub, dgithub. ASP.NET. I pre-cloned this earlier because I wasn't sure how fast the, uh, the net would be here. So here I'm going to go and say start dot, which is a good tip for folks because that'll go and launch mm -hmm. uh, Explorer. And within here we've got a VS config file. VS config files are super interesting. Let's go ahead and bring that over. And VS config files are not part of WinGet. They're part of Visual right. Studio. Right. How do they talk to each other? How is that related? So you can call a WinGet or a VS config file from a YAML WinGet configuration file so that you don't need to rewrite everything twice. Nice. So then here is, this is going to be checked in today, uh, a YAML file that's not for Scott's faves, mm -hmm. but for ASP.NET that right. says, in order to build ASP.NET from scratch, I need what? I need JDK. I need. Yarn, I need Node, I need Visual Studio, and look at that, and the VS config file. You've all ran Visual Studio installer and then gone to optional. Yep, more, import, VS config file, wait. Scroll down, checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. Yeah. So you can put these YAML files in your repositories and then clone it and then say, set my machine up so that I can run that. And in that case, what we would do is we would say, when get configure mm -hmm. that YAML. Yep. And it just sets up the machine. But you've already done that because you did it from Dev Home. That's right. That's very cool. Cool. So I think we should build ASP.NET since uh, but we just this is it. this is ugly. Like you, you put my stuff on it, but I'm known for a really attractive terminal. I like my fonts a certain way. Yeah. I, I it's gonna take me a bunch of time. I gotta go into settings and change the colors and stuff because this is kind of mid. Now, uh, it's not going to take that long. We actually have, like, I, I, I know a guy. Okay. I'll get him out. Hey, uh, Carlos, are you here? We've got a developer on Windows Terminal. Oh, my Carlos God. Amora. Thanks, Carlos. How you guys doing? Why do you have a, you have a backpack on? Hey, I'm always on the go. You know, got my keyboard with me. 
What got the cherry keys. Look at your freaking hipster. He's got a yeah, keyboard. Man. Did you just literally tell me they were cherry keys? Yeah. Are you also like a crossfitting vegan? Not yet. They'll, you know, if you, if, <laughs> I'm just saying, if somebody's, <laughs> if somebody's got MX cherry keys, they'll tell you before they introduce themselves. Oh, yeah? We're going to introduce you first, though. This is Carlos. He's a developer on Terminal. So mm -hmm. a lot of the features in Terminal you can thank Carlos and his team for. Thanks. All right. So uh, what, are you going to have him set this up and click yeah. around? I got an expert. All right, so I'm a pro. impress me. Yeah, so uh, one of the new features we have on Windows Terminal is actually portable mode. So here on my little flash drive, um, I can just plug that in. And I can just copy over Terminal to our desktop. Ba -ba -ba. And when you open that up, this is just an unpackaged build of Windows Terminal. And I can run windowsterminal.exe. And that's running its own local copy that's just from that folder. Um, so this is my own custom, custom configuration with a background image and everything, just wherever you need it. And this is a different version of Terminal than I might have. Yep, this is my own custom version of it, um, 1.18 versus you might be on 1.16, for example. Um, and another thing I want to highlight is if we open up the dropdown, I also added uh, some nested profiles. So, oops. Um, so, right here, you can actually see um, all of the uh, developer prompts that Visual Studio comes with. I, I put them in a little folder in the dropdown so that it's, you know, nice, a little bit more neat. Um, and you, back, you have a back, custom background here. You could have custom anything, and then we got the Dev Home and Dev Drive icons. Dev Home yeah. and Dev Drive. Got to represent. With a nice Microsoft build background. Mm -hmm. um, another highly requested feature that we have is Tab Tearoff. Um, and it just, it just works. And you can even move your tabs from one, full, one uh, window to another. And yeah, I mean, the whole thing is it just, it just works. We That's pretty nice cool. I think you. that the people who use Windows 11 will be excited about that. And the people that use Windows 10, actually, because <gasps> we've decided to, I know, isn't it amazing? We've decided to uh, backport default terminal to Windows 10. So now you can actually make Windows Terminal the default terminal on Windows 10. So if you open up CMD or PowerShell, it should just open in Windows Terminal once you set it that way. And that's announced today. That's announced today. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll, go. I'll be at the right. Windows booth. You know, yeah. got to put terminals get everywhere. Your, so. your cherry keys. Good job. Cherry keys, man. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. All right, cool. So are we, are we thinking we're going to actually try to build something? Yeah, I think so. OK. So we were on D, GitHub, ASP.NET Core. This is all of ASP.NET. And uh, we'll go and say build.ps1. And what this will do is it will have a, a, stop, a stopwatch. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a stopwatch going. Uh, and that'll tell us how long this will take. Now, this is a non-trivial build. And there's a reason that we picked this. We didn't just randomly say, let's build this. We could go and build uh, Dev Home. It might take, I don't know, a couple minutes. Yeah. We wanted to make something work. We uh, like the ASP.NET build. If you want to go ahead and do whatever you need to do as far as like stopwatches and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, what's cool about this is that within the source code, we are building the source code of ASP.NET, is it's hard to set up. Historically, you can go and do this yourself and try this test. You go into GitHub, you go to the README, and then you have to install all these things. We installed them all with Winget. That's right. We installed Java and Yarn and Node and et cetera. And it has C++, JavaScript, it has minification, it has Yarn calls, and it has managed code all in one repository. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, ready? All right. Here we go. One other thing that's worth pointing out is that anytime, in some of you who are devs who have two drives will know that there's like temp folders and caches, and why is that important in a dev drive world? So the idea is that if you have like temp, it's yeah. on C temp. And if you have a NuGet cache, it's on C whatever, whatever NuGet. Right. That makes sense. Right. So if you're going to be bouncing back and forth between a dev drive and a non-dev drive, you're going to want to think about the characteristics of your language and your world. So you're going to think about that. In this case here, mm -hmm. we basically did some custom work. Right. So what we did is I made a, that PS1 file and set a bunch of environment variables to say, put my NPM here, put my NuGet cache over here. It was a hassle. Yeah. I think it would actually be really cool if we did some sort of fe feature for that in Dev Home. Right. So Dev Home, which set up my whole machine, should be smart enough to know, oh, I'm Python dev. Exactly. Put my caches over here. Yeah. Now, that's the kind of feedback we need from them. Yeah. So you could file a feature request on GitHub. You want me to go and file? OK. Yeah. So you're not just going to take that and do it for me? No, I'm, I'm busy. OK. Yeah. So mean. All right, I guess I will file that bug. <laughs> cool. So but that's kind of the idea. Now, I think it would be cool, though, if we spend some time while this is building 
talking about the last uh, you know, couple of years, which has been pretty cool uh, in this space. So here's my personal terminal on my personal machine. My personal machine, uh, is this is real, it's mostly just uh, headshots of me and then uh, Stack Overflow links to like how to make Hello World uh, on stage. Okay. Um, but this is my personal computer. And you can see here I'm using Oh My Posh. Mm -hmm. And in my uh, prompt here, I'm getting these cool glyphs. You can actually see my blood sugar in real time because I'm diabetic, uh, and, which is also as important as my current Git branch. And my blood sugar is a little high, don't worry. It's just because I'm super stressed out because I'm giving a talk at Build. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll come down a little bit later. Um, and uh, I, I thought it'd be cool to show you a, a like, how we used to use terminals. You know what I mean? Okay. We, uh, the, the elders. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, like this is, see how this that's is, different. This is nice. What you think that your terminal is so, so cute? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No. Oh. This is how the good Lord intended a terminal to look. So, okay. this. This is actually using the same kind of. HSLS or um, HLSL shaders that you would use in like video games and stuff. Yeah. How am I able to do this in Terminal? So this is actually a really cool feature that came from the community. So one day we were just at the office and we received a pull request to add retro terminal effects to the terminal window. And we weren't expecting this feature. We didn't plan to make it, but we saw it and we we're like, ah, oh, like that's cool. Yeah. We got to have it. So then we just merged it in. And then that is how, that's the underlying architecture, because that is itself is a shader. So now you're using other shaders here to make that happen. Right. And this is warping it and making it superior. But I want to show you how to make it even better. Superior. I'm gonna, yeah, superior. And right. by superior, I mean old. <laughs> so we're just going to roll in here. And, and uh, this, is how, this is how we, the, the better people. We. Yeah. 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 But the set of this, this basically, this is configuring my terminal for a specific demographic uh, of people, which is effectively men my age who are me, <laughs> is the, the target market for okay. this kind of work. I get it now. Yeah. So yeah. now it's green. Ah. ah. Superior. Superior. Look, 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 you can see the, you can see the scan line going by. I just wanted to make sure. That you saw the, uh, the, the scan line here. But what's actually cool about this is that if we wanted to, and you showed me this, uh, if you don't want to be awesome, uh, you don't have to be awesome if you don't want to be awesome, okay, what I'm <laughs> saying, um, is we can go in here and I can search for uh, shaders and we can pick other ones. Mm -hmm. I think there was one that was called like Neon, Neon Road. Neon Road. Okay, let's take a look at that. Oh. Right? And you might say, why? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, Scott. <laughs> and what is the answer? Because it's freaking awesome. Right? Superior. Old. <laughs> it's awesome. Why not? Why yeah. should you not be able to do this? I yeah. just kind of think that that's really cool. Um, being able to do stuff, like someone asked me, like, well, what business problem are you solving? Uh, <laughs> This is a Microsoft. Microsoft people talk like that. Well, that's really great. What business problem are you solving? Well, I don't know. But if, if you have this problem, I have solved it for you. Right? So in this instance here, I now realize that Carlos has actually solved a huge problem for me because I have this pile of multiple Linuxes, multiple PowerShells yeah. all installed. So I'm going to go and make a fly out Linux nested profile. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah, and I can go and run, if I wanted to, a split-screen Ubuntu and you know, go and do something like that, which looks a lot like what we're seeing in the back, uh, the back wall right yeah. there, which is pretty awesome, um, which means that I can go and compile C code, C++, that's yeah. in Windows or in Linux, and I can run Linux GUI apps. Using WSLG. WSLG, G for graphics. Mm -hmm. I can go and run stuff. And uh, if we go right here, I could actually run notepad.exe. A Windows app. A Windows app. But I'm running it from Linux, but I'm on a Windows machine. So when mm -hmm. I hit enter, Linux is like, Bleh? and Windows is like, ah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is cool. So what's something, this is building still. What's something yep. that I could go and build here? OK, so we were talking about superior things in Windows. And the oldest thing that I can remember is that pinball game. The oldest thing you can remember is yeah. space pinball. Okay. Yeah. So 
Space Pinball, unfortunately, is copyrighted, and it's under Windows XP, mm -hmm. and we would never want to uh, break any kind of copyright rules. But it's on GitHub, which probably means it's fine. What this person has done is they have decompiled Space Pinball for Windows, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can recompile it on Linux, because why not, right? So then we'll go here to Linux, and I'll say GitHub repo clone, and I'll clone this. Now, they don't want to break uh, copyright law, so they did not include any of the resources, WAV files, MIDI files, anything like that. Mm -hmm. However, I happen to have a copy of Windows XP. Just lying around. At my house, in the original wrapper. And I'm going to go and grab the, the MIDI files. Mm -hmm. uh, and a MIDI file, MIDI file, young person. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's like an MP3, but it's better. Superior. Old. Old. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control-C, and I'm going to copy that. Now, you saw me run Notepad before. I'm going to say explorer.exe, mm -hmm. and then this is where hell freezes over, because I'm going to run explorer.exe in Linux, which is going to open Explorer in Linux, and then I'm going to bask in the glory of Tux in Explorer. And then I'm going to control V, pasting in the MIDI files and the WAV files for pinball. Then I'll come back over here. I'll run CMake, which will generate the make file. It's going to go and make sure I have a C compiler, C++ compiler, and all that kind of stuff. So I've generated the make file for, for Space Cadet pinball. Blah, blah, blah. Logs, logs, logs. Found some stuff. OK, cool. Now I can go and say make. So this is going to actually, let's just make sure we reset here. Mm -hmm. This is going to compile. Space Cadet Pinball under Linux, right. which was previously decompiled from Windows XP mm -hmm. in a time warp 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we took the WAV files and the MIDI files and we brought them over here. But this is a Linux GUI app. Yeah. Like, and Linux GUI apps are cool because if you look at my start menu here, we've got like Dev Home, I've got like Mastodon, I got Blue Sky, I got Visual Studio that we installed. I've got a Linux app, and you see Tux right there. So Linux apps, Android apps, Windows apps are all cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria in, this, in the start menu. So now, can we run this? Let's find out. And I'll just make sure that my audio works. All right, here we go. All right. Mm. I don't know how to use this. Push space. Do you know how to do this? Do you remember? You push space, it goes yeah. down, 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 and then what do you do? You just let go? Yeah. yeah. There it is. All right. There it, is. it works. It's okay. You got it. And I want to point this out that this, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Um, this is a Linux app, so it looks like a Linux app, and you can see as my mouse moves in and out of it, Windows, Linux, Windows, Linux, big mouse gang, small mouse gang. You can do that, and I can run any utilities that I want to, and I have full control. This is the kind of stuff that we've been doing for the last half decade, and I'm really excited to see like, what's coming uh, in the next uh, half decade. Yeah. Oh, and um, how does it draw like that? Because <laughs> I know we had Android apps and we had Linux yeah. apps. Yeah, so um, WSL is using a virtualization platform, mm -hmm. and WSA, Windows Subsystem for Android, uses that same virtualization technology so that you can render Android apps as well on Windows. Right, and I can run like the Amazon App Store, or I can use .NET Maui apps, or run Android apps in WSA. You mm -hmm. said that the code is shared, which is yes. really cool. Yeah. Rock on. OK, cool. How's our build doing? Uh, looks like it's. Cool. So we built, okay, it looks like the build took six minutes, 37 seconds, and the whole thing and all the generation around it took seven, so less than eight minutes. We built ASP.NET from scratch, from source on this laptop in less than eight minutes. Right. And we also went from Ubi all the way through setting up with a dev home using a YAML configuration file to get your apps, then we right. cloned, then we got the dependencies from another YAML file, and then we built all within 30, 40 minutes. Right. So the goal here is that you receive a machine, and you can go and take it out of the box, set it up, sign in. Everything that you need is in your repository. Yep. Windows knows how to get it the way that you want. You can carry around, if you're a, a hipster, mm -hmm. uh, a keyboard and a portable terminal. I don't She's know. ready to go. Who would do that? I don't know. People. People do that. Mm. Um, that gives you the flexibility that you want. Where do you see this going in September, right? I want to yeah. have all this information in my GitHub somewhere, in a gist, or maybe on my OneDrive. 
we set up 15 machines in the preparation of this yeah. demo? We were able to clean and rebuild and completely wipe the OS and then be productive again within, I don't know, under an hour. Right. Yeah. So you click dev, you click development during the out of box experience. Yep. You go into dev home, and then right now, the one that we released today has that one extension. We want to yes. see extensions, we want to see other widgets. Yeah. So the thing that we're working on now, so we've added that GitHub extension. We're now working on adding an Azure DevOps extension with similar parity so you can manage your Azure DevOps repositories and tasks and widgets from there and boards and that sort of thing. So that's what we're actively working on now. And then when we did the WinGet configure to install Visual Studio, we were actually, it, was, it wasn't that WinGet knows how to talk to Visual Studio, is it? It's the desired state configuration mm -hmm. provider for Visual Studio. So you can use existing DSCs, desired state configuration providers. You can plug those in yep. so that your YAML file could set up other stuff. Yep. Cool. And then we also built with that dev drive, which also works on Windows Home, not just Windows Pro. Super important. We, we talked about a little bit about that, that WSL, the ability to run Linux, compile apps, run Linux graphical apps, exists on all SKUs of Windows, mm -hmm. as does dev drive. So you're going to get that ReFS, that re reliable, resilient? Resilient file resilient system. Resilient file system available even on your student machines that you might be using uh, in college if you're on home. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Did we miss anything? That's oh, pretty okay. awesome. That was pretty good. Do I get to keep the machine that you had me unbox? I mean, I did set it up. OK. All right, well, we're gonna, we'll wipe it and we'll do it all again tomorrow. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of really great stuff for you at Build. I want you to take a picture of this, this slide right here. These are related sessions that will dig really deep into each of these things. So you're coming up next, right? Yep. So my session with Sharla is the new developer experiences in Windows session at 1.30 today. And we will be walking through Dev Home, showing you more Dev Drive stuff, and going really deep into the new experiences that we've delivered. And then after that is the learn how to get your machine to a ready-to-code state with Demetrius and Ryan at 2.45. Yep. And they will be going into uh, a deep dive of Winget configuration files. And then lastly, to, end, to wrap the day up, we have a discussion session with the folks from WSL, Windows Terminal, PowerToys, Dev Home, talking about how uh, good team culture is making Windows better for developers. Cool. All of this is meant to reduce toil, increase joy. Another thing I want you to understand, if you put all of these parts together, because you noticed that we didn't do any cloud stuff, we did everything on physical machines. Mm -hmm. Here's the part that's going to make you go, if you saw Amanda Silver and them, Winget Configure, Dev Home, Dev Drives. What's that going to look like in Dev Boxes? You yep. can imagine a world where I set up my machine, I have my dev box on my physical machine, I can do local builds, I could then remote into, jump into a developer box with another different dev home experience Sure. in that world. All of these things are coming now and later this year, and uh, it's all going to help hopefully make things more joyful mm -hmm. and less sucky. Yeah. So would you say that we shaved the yak on stage? We have 100% shaved a yak live on stage. Cool. Thanks I for get it, it now. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good job. Cool, thanks. Okay, boomer. <laughs> All right, thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.